Good evening. evening. It's good to see each of you here, whether it was because the message, whether it's because uh, you just planned to be here tonight already anyhow, or just maybe because of the camp young people that are going to be speaking for us. But we're missing a few. Well, there's some on the way. Hopefully all of them are on their way, but we'll have some time here tonight. And so, uh, but we're going to start by singing our chorus tonight, Thou Art Worthy. What does that mean? I find that a misnomer, so to speak, to say that he is worthy. I, I think it'd be better, I don't know how you would sing it, thou art more than worthy. Um, there's probably a chorus somewhere that says it that way too. And so I'm not sure, but let's go ahead and sing together, thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, glory and honor, glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created, hast all things created, Thou hast created all things. For thy pleasure they are created, for thou art worthy, O Lord. Let's stand to open in prayer. And Zebediah, could you open us in prayer, please? Before you're seated, let's greet one another, please. I'm encouraged too by uh, the, by all of you being here. I think I maybe I should say, well, I'll preach three messages more often, and that's that's what this. No, I know that's not true. I missed that. I wouldn't have. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> that's what happens when you're in children's church. You miss that, huh? So uh, we're going to have first of all, uh, we're going to have some testimonies just from you folks, and then we'll have the uh, camp video. Appreciate it, Brittany has done that for us and she'll pull that up and so then you'll get a chance to go to camp for uh, a little while here with the juniors and the teens and then we'll have the camp testimonies so we'll watch the pictures first how does that sound then you can talk then you can give your rebuttal for the pictures and what you were doing what's the matter Viv Vivi you don't look so happy about the pictures have you seen the video already you have not oh mom kept a secret huh okay great do we have any testimonies Ellen. Well, yes.
Christ City Baptist in Chandler, Arizona. Okay? Any other testimonies? <laughs> She's shy like her mother. Well, maybe not. So <laughs> You were shy at one time. Yes, you were. <laughs> well, let's pray for that. That's that's been a blessing and an encouragement and something we've been praying for a long time. And so uh now if I just keep talking going on not looking over there, she'll be looking at me again, you know, but if I if I say anything to her, man, boom, face goes back underneath. It. Sister, I know that. <laughs> okay, any other testimonies? Well, you know, folks, I seriously, I want to encourage you to find someone to encourage tonight. Okay? You know, a lot of times we don't know what people are going through. And to ask them. And I, like I said, I gave carte blanche this morning, and we talked about it in our connection group, that if somebody asks you how you're doing, tell them. In fact, if it's going to take a while, tell them to take a seat and fill them in. Because that's what, it, that's what being in the body is all about. Provoking one another unto love and good works. I'm not going to preach this morning's message again. But then that's what the testimony times are supposed to do. The testimonies are not bragamonies. They're saying, look what God is doing, and it might encourage somebody else who's going through a similar trial. And so we'd encourage you there. Any other testimonies? And then we'll move on. Yes, Randy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray for Randy as he's battling prostate cancer. And, you know, some of you just didn't realize I said something. I, I just talked to, I think it was the prayer time when we, we did something different. And all of a sudden some said, man, he's battling cancer. I said, yes, he is. I, 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 I benefit. I get to go visit everybody. In their homes when they when they visit here and I find out what's going on but I don't come back and put it in the bulletin but start praying for it. it's in my prayer bulletin but uh, just continue to find out get to know these new folks and find out what's going on in their life and encourage them you may have been down the road that they're down 
and that can be a great encouragement and help to folks, okay? Any others before we have the young people come? We're going to have the, the videos all ready to go. Okay, so we'll turn the lights out. I don't know what kind of a sound we got, Jeff, but... Uh, Oh, there we go.
strange. We can have the lights, please. Okay. Are you guys ready now? No? Come on up anyhow. We, we, we took down six juniors, two teens. We brought everybody back, but there, we're missing a few tonight. Uh, missing a couple juniors and a, and a teen. Oh, is he? Oh, well, we'll wait. The teens are going to go last anyhow, right? He missed the pictures, and there was plenty of them in there, wasn't there? So, well, it's, if, if you want to follow this up, it's on YouTube. So just look under the church or under, under, look under Brittany's page, okay? So, yeah, that's good. And so we'll get that. So we'll have the juniors come and share their testimonies, first of all. And they're just going to tell you a little bit of what they liked, any decision they made. And they'll tell us their name, first of all. Ladies before gentlemen, Miss Vivi, you can do that, please. Oh, oh. The, the most picturesque one of all, though, Bella, come on here. I think she had a PR person uh, trying to get her up here. So this mic is on. Okay. Bella, all of you guys come up here and stand together and support one another, except for uh, Christian, you can wait until Noah gets here. So you four come on up here, and you use this mic right here, okay? Go ahead, Bella. Tell them your name, first of all. Bella. My name is Bella, Isabella. <laughs> what did you like about camp? The story of George Miller, or not his name, Mueller. And the decision I made was to be use kinder words. Okay. My name is Vivi, and um, my decision was to obey my parents more. Okay. You're up. What's your name? Fred? Fred? You can do it. Okay. Addie, what'd you like about camp? Just tell me. You don't know. Did you like the food? You like the food. Did you like your cabin? Yes. Did you like the speaker? You didn't like Mr. Andrew? Oh, yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, did you make any decisions? You decided to come home anyhow after camp got over, didn't you? Yeah, okay. What what pre what message did you like the best? Um, Pardon? George Mueller? Okay. What where was he? What country was he in? England, maybe? Yeah, he was in England. Okay. And he had a bunch of what? Orphanage? Very good. Orphanages, yeah. And how did they operate? How did they get food and stuff? Uh, by, praying. by praying. Very good. So you did learn something. Good. Thank you, Addie. AJ, it's all yours, man. Turn it loose. You can tell them. You're, you're. My name is AJ. What'd you like about camp besides cannonball? Um. <laughs> I know. Tell them, tell them what cannonball is. Um, what, what, what did you, you, what did you, what did you use? You used what? What did you have in your hand there? Um, balls. Balls, ball bearings, yeah. And you put them in what? The tubes. The tubes, uh-huh. And they go what? They just go run all over the table, right? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. That was fun, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you make any decisions? Uh, yeah. Okay. I decided to be more nice to my sister. Good. Amen. Okay, thank you. It, it, was, it was interesting. I got decision slips the same day for, for AJ and for Vivi. And, and AJ was going to be nice to his sister, and Vivi was going to be nice to her brother. And I said, that's good. That works out well when the cross is over like that. And so thank you, uh, you folks here. Are you ready? Okay. You can use the big mic, okay? <laughs> Hi, my name is Christian, and I liked all the messages. My favorite activity was branding, which I did not sign up for. But it's, it was thundering, so we had, I, cho I, cho I had chosen a water activity, but it was 
thunder and lightning, so we couldn't do that. So uh, my, my decision was to not give or to give all my life to God, not half, but all. Thank you, guys. You can go have a seat. We'll just have no applause when he gets here. <laughs> now, explain to explain a hello, hello. It's there. We go. Okay, it's not on much. Okay, uh, a couple of pictures of things you saw there. One of the things you saw was an old truck. You know what that was? That was the food truck. And they made sausage McMuffins for all the teens. And you'd go up and you'd order it. And they would make it in the truck. And then they had a tray that slid down. They put it on there and it slid right down. And you picked it up. And you ate it. And they were delicious. Uh, the food truck has no motor in it. They have to pull it. But uh, <laughs> they bring that food truck down there once a week on Thursday morning. They were supposed to have their late game Friday night. But the rain kind of shut that down. And so, and then you saw uh, the camp speaker for the teens is what Noah is going to tell you about right now as he's going to come up and share his testimony. You just missed it, Noah. Come on up. <laughs> and so, and, and you'll get to see the pictures. You can go online and uh, they're on Brittany's e uh, YouTube account. So everybody else has shared theirs, so you're up. <laughs> hey, um, I'd just like to say thank you to Pastor drove us up there and to thank you for the rest of you guys for uh, letting us go there and uh, I just want to say that I had a really good time there and uh, it was my last time going so that was nice and uh, yeah uh, if I had to have a testimony I'd say it'd be that I decided to like work past what problems I had in my life and to still praise the Lord I guess <laughs> so uh, but yeah who was the speaker Jeff Redlin, really good speaker. And where's he from? I forgot. Right, okay. Yeah. Pensacola? Pensacola. Yeah. Yeah, Pensacola. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, yes, Jeff Redlin is the campus pastor at Pensacola Christian College for camp. It's called Campus Church. It's on the campus, but it's separated from the school. And he was the youth pastor. Then he came out to Colorado, and he was at Front Range Baptist Church for 15 years. We tried, we kept trying to get him to come and speak for Master's Men, but it just comes at the wrong time. It still comes at the wrong time. I talked to him again. We had a good visit a couple times, got to visit with him. And so, and then for the young people, the juniors, they had Mr. Andrew. And uh, he was their speaker, and he also came in disguise. And they, we actually, you know what else I saw at camp I have never seen before? Sasquatch. I saw him, I was eating, and he went running by the door. Didn't he? Did any of you young people see Sasquatch? No, it was it. <laughs> no, I saw him, and they, they had a couple other characters on campus they were looking for. So they had a good time. They have decided now, because both camps were packed out. I mean, there was not an empty seat in any of the rooms. They are building a third camp now because they're having to turn people away. So where the horse corrals and stuff are, they're going to move those up higher, and they're going to build a third camp right there as the funds come in so but uh we had a good week uh it was warm and then it got wet and uh it at least it knocked the dust down a while but you you could see the young people had a good time uh there Noah, there's a bunch of pictures of you in this so you're going to have to get that video and, and and watch that with the barrel there's some pictures of you doing that and then down at the lake front too and some pictures there so but uh thank you parents for sending your children I don't take that for granted anymore after COVID. <laughs> and so uh, continue to pray for these young people, though, that as the decisions they've made, will be, they'll be able to continue on with them. And uh, we look forward to what's going to happen. How many of you remember when you went to camp, adults? Yeah. Okay. Should they had camp back then, Pastor? Yeah. And it was in the same time zone as ours, too, as the church was here. <laughs> It was, it was in California, yeah, it was still. <laughs> There's all kinds of memories that go back with things that have taken place at camps. And uh, I, I, I go back and I look at these pictures, too, of all the camps. And, and, and that's, I've got this presentation that I've got to work up. I've got to find the time to do it of all the pictures of the last 30 years. And uh, like uh, 
taken Ian and Davis up to Greeley Hill in my little my little sports car. <laughs> there was never any danger, was there? No. <laughs> And uh, some of these others. So, uh, but praise the Lord for the young people that were able to go this year. And uh, next year, we're probably looking at the, they gave us the list of speakers. And the one I think that probably be the best for the teens is uh, Ben Ice. He took uh, Brother um, Roger Willis's church in Simi Valley. He's also the author and founder of uh, Truth Trackers, some of the material we've used here. And he'll be speaking to the teens next year about the third week of July, I believe. So that should at least cut out any problems with summer school for those that have to take summer school. And that, and, and Noah, you can go back, you know, as a counselor now. So uh, we'll look forward to <laughs> down the road there, right? And so, uh, but praise the Lord for that. So continue to pray for them. Take your bulletins, please. Let's mention a few announcements. Uh, they're... Um, of course, our midweek service, Brother Graves will be here bringing the message. Next Sunday night is our 4th of July picnic, our barbecue, and uh, that'll be uh, at 5 o'clock on Sunday night. The meat has been donated, the hot dogs and hamburgers, so all you have to do is you have to bring whatever bun for whatever meat you would like. Or if you want to bring your own meat, there will be grill. If you want to grill your own, you know, if you want to bring your filet mignon, George, and uh, so that you can. <laughs> <laughs> George will be on the street corner out here with a tin can hoping to raise enough money to buy some filet mignon <laughs> and, uh, but uh, we'll have those and so if you want now this is I know this is going to be difficult to, to think this through but if, if you want to have a hot dog you bring hot dog buns if you want to have a hamburger you bring hamburger buns Oh, no, yeah, if you're, if you're, what's that called when you don't have the lettuce bun? Wrap. Lettuce wrap. Yeah, if you want to bring lettuce, that's fine. Yeah, whatever. If you, if you want to bring a tortilla and wrap it in that, you know, whatever you want to put the meat in, you're, you're, you say, I want to just put it in my mouth. Well, okay, just bring your mouth then, and that's fine. We'll, we'll take care of that. And then we ask every, every family to bring a side dish or a dessert. And then we'll have uh, a special time, uh, Sinkspiration, and, uh, of course, this is our, our 4th of July uh, service, and then NBT. Uh, somebody asked me, and, and we have enough new folks who don't know what Neighborhood Bible Time is. How many know what Neighborhood Bible Time is? Keep your hands up. How many want to do the booster cheer? Oh, the hands go down. They do know what Bible Time is. <laughs> okay. Well, Bible Time, uh, as, as I've said before, is like Vacation Bible School on steroids. And it is high energy, high activity. We'll have two evangelists that will come in that Saturday. And then they will be ministering to us throughout the week. Uh, they will be having a rally time in here. And they will teach the kids all kinds of songs. This is for those. The, this will be uh, four years old. Is that right? Four. I think it's four years old. Is that what we? Where's Christy? Four years old? Yeah, I think it's four years old up through sixth grade. And then at night, we'll have all the teens. And there'll be a special program that the, that the evangelists will have the teens at night. There'll be a Bible story, a missionary story, and then there will be a rally time. And so it will be great. We should be getting some posters. I'm going to call them Monday to make sure when the posters are getting here, the flyers that we can pass out because we want to invite folks to come. This is an evangelistic outreach. We talked in our class this morning, and I... I, I thought maybe I'd better clarify that. I said, we said this morning, the church is for who? Who is the church for? The church is believers. Exactly. The church is a body of believers. And so what we need to be doing is reaching out to folks who are not believers, but then we need to introduce them to Christ. Otherwise, they don't understand what's going on. And we need to be doing now. There will be always, I try to always include a presentation of the gospel one way or another in the message. But basically this message, this service is for believers and to be encouraged. But this is an outreach for unbelievers. Okay? And so we really want to reach out, ask God to, and what, what, you know, in the past we've gone out canvassing, we've taken the bus or the van and we've hit neighborhoods. But what I'd like you to do is hit your neighborhood or adopt a neighborhood. Now, I know that you can go door-to-door -door on the Davis compound out there. And, 
<laughs> and get some food. But no, that doesn't count. That's not, that's not a block. And, and plus, you can't bring dogs and cows and horses to church. So you could try. I know. <laughs> but uh, so if you're out of way and there's no other houses around you, in fact, you know, we have a little oversaturation now at Chelsea Glen. We, we, no, no. Well, there's new houses, so I think there's probably enough to reach out there. But uh, you just find a neighborhood, uh, go out and pass out. If you want to pass out flyers at Walmart, if you want to pass out flyers wherever you want to, because we want people to know there's something special going on. I'll be putting it on the sign probably this week. And uh, Neighborhood Bible Time is a great opportunity. A number of kids get saved the week of Bible Time. And families are reached. Uh, our church in Idaho had Bible Time every year. And we saw the church grew because of the folks that reached through Bible Time. And so it's, it's something that's for the neighborhood. And it involves the Bible. It involves love of country. And these things that people will listen to. And so be in prayer for that. And uh, we won't be teaching this year. What we've decided to do is if you don't have a, a junior high group, we're going to have the teen evangelists will be teaching the classes. But we do need helpers. And Christy is working on talking to you. If you would like to help, see Christy. You won't be having to teach. But what we, yes, ma'am. I just, I want to throw a plug out here. A plug. We will need meals for the evangelists that whole week. Yes. So if you are able, please let me know. Okay. 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 That would be great. And uh, we're looking for some lodging too, hopefully for them. I have a couple of ideas, but I'm just going to wait on that. And so uh, pray for that and looking forward to a great week there. Okay. So be in prayer. There are no birthdays or anniversaries this week. Our fellowship time is at Super Burger. And I thought we missed it. That was <laughs> happy birthday to me. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> birthday well, two more years and I'm gone. Because I'm already gone. I am not gone yet. But I'm getting closer to that. So, yes, I know. Yes, my, because I, now I am older than my wife for six months. Then she turned 68 also. So thank you. And uh, we, we did have a nice birthday dinner last night. I got a free thing, a free burger from Red Robin. So we went to Red Robin last night. And my boys picked up the rest of the meal. So that was, that was a nice birthday present. Then I went to Penny's. You talk about sticker shock. I, I sent out the email, and my brother says, were the prices good or bad? And I said, they were bad. How many here have ever spent $60 for a dress shirt? Oh Randy, you're the man. <laughs> I saw that. I'm going, because <coughs> I really need to replace one of my shirts that's getting a little frayed. And I, I said, oh, you have got to be kidding me. I used to buy a suit for $60, much less a shirt. <laughs> so anyhow but I did have I did find a, a pair of pants that my wife bought me for my birthday that were on sale and they gave me a 25% off since I had a Sears card so that wasn't quite as shocking but I think everything in the store you know there's the dollar store well JC Penney's is the $60 store pants $60 shirt $60 suits five times $60 but uh, anyhow I think they've priced themselves out of my market anyhow so uh, I'm ready to go back to Salvation Army and go picking through things to find something to work there on that. Okay, enough of that nonsense. Uh, let's have our ushers come and receive our offering, please. It'll be $60. No. <laughs> <laughs>
Bob, could you give thanks for the offering, please? Amen. I don't know if that is open. I have it. It's open. Okay. Did we miss something in the service tonight? Another song. song. Very perceptive. Well, we're going to have three more songs, and uh, but they'll be in the middle of the messages. And so I thought, well, this would be a good way to do this and kind of break things up. And after all, when I'm preaching three messages, we're going to need a break in between No, they're going to be very short. But uh, these are three messages that Brother Redland brought, and uh, the first one was Tuesday night, and if you want to take your Bibles and, uh, oh, incidentally, I was going to say one other thing too. If you'd like to help out, we had a number of young people that did need scholarships, and we do have some money in the scholarship fund, but if you'd like to help out with some of the young people that were not able to pay their full way and uh, just designate for camp scholarships, and that would be a great help to cover those costs. We never want anyone here at Calvary to miss anything because of cost. We want to make sure that uh, if I have people tell me, well, I can't go because of the cost, I said, well, you do what you can do, and we'll, the Lord will provide the rest. And so please don't ever miss something because you can't afford it, because uh, George cannot go out and get his tin cup and stand by the curb and raise the money for us there. With that. <laughs> He's found a job. He's got a job. I'm so <laughs> Sorry, George, that's not, (laughs) but God will meet the needs, and uh, so if you want to be part of that, that's great. Um, Psalm 18, and these are three messages that Brother Redlin brought, and I really enjoyed these three especially, and and I thought these these are good, and I just want to share, it's kind of sharing a few kernels of thought uh, tonight that I hope will be an encouragement to you. Um, We see in Psalm 18, down to verse 30. Psalm 18, verse 30, and I had never, I, I preached through this psalm. I think I, I think I did a whole series of messages on this psalm, but I didn't catch this. That's what's exciting about the Word of God, is that you can read it through, and you can, you can even study it, and then all of a sudden you look at it later and go, wow. And this, when he brought this, I said, that is really good. Psalm 18, verse 30, notice what it says there. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is the buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. You see what happened right there? It went from God is perfect to the fact he makes my way perfect. And I hadn't seen that before. I said, that is excellent. Because you see, many times we want to make our way perfect, don't we? We want to do what's right. And it's a struggle and it's difficult. But you see, we don't have to do it. God does it. You see, in fact, he says, My way, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. Why do I constantly emphasize being in the word of God? Because that's the source of our strength. That's how God works in us and through us. Not only that, he's a shield to those who put their trust in him. Now, we know we have a shield. In fact, the young people at camp, they had shields for their cabins. In fact, uh, Christian went running out one night because he saw that somebody who wasn't in their cabin had their shield. And that's forbidden. And he went and claimed his shield for his cabin. But if you have a shield, let's say, uh, I don't have a shield here. Uh, But if I have a shield, okay, here's one. If I have a shield, okay? Now, it's going to protect how much of me? My face, okay? You need a shield that protects what? All of you. So I can stand real fast and dodge the arrows and the, like this all the time. And guess what's going to happen? I'm going to get shot. You want something that covers your entire body, that gives you everything you need. Because the devil is throwing his fiery darts at you, isn't he? And he's trying to, and listen, remember, the devil is the enemy. No one else is. Now, he may use people, but he's the enemy. He's the one we need to get upset at, but God is our shield and defense. If you think you can stop the devil's darts, you're in trouble. Sometimes we think, well, if I just try harder, I'll get victory. No, folks, you won't. Because, again, you're depending upon what? The flesh. 
instead of letting God be your shield and your defender. You say, well, that's not manly to hide behind things. It is. It's wise. When you're in war, you hide behind it. In fact, I just read, I forget where I read it, where a man was shot 11 times, but it, because he had his body armor on, it didn't kill him. Then I heard about a man who went into a conflict, and the one time he didn't wear his body armor, he got shot, one shot, and it killed him. See, we have armor, but we've got to put it on. We've got to be in God's word every day. We've got to say, Lord, protect me. Lord, you are my defense. You are the one that I trust in. You are the only one that can protect me from the fiery darts of the wicked one. So use him. Not only that, he is a rock. What kind of a rock is he? It says there in that verse, he is a rock who a rock save our God. There is no other rock like him. There is no other one that you can depend upon him like him. He is the rock of our foundation. He is the rock of our salvation. He is the rock of our refuge. We can trust in him. And then as we start trusting, you see, the link that takes us from God being perfect to him making our way perfect is our trust in him. Another word for trust is what? Our faith in him. We're talking about faithfulness. Tonight, praise God, you all voted to have a service tonight. You came. You had faith. Thank the Lord for that. Now, next week we're going to feed you. So the real test is going to come two weeks from tonight. And I hope we'll all still be faithful. Now, how do you do it? Well, you trust the Lord. God gives you, and as you trust him, as you have faith in him, the fact he is perfect will give us a perfect way. He guides our feet. You ever got up in the middle of the night when you were someplace and you didn't, weren't sure where you were and you try to find things and you find them with your big toe, inevitably, or your nose, or your little, what's even worse is your little toe. That's the one that gets your attention. But God will guide our feet. In fact, we see there's some times in the Bible that and one of the messages mentioned, in fact, that the children of Israel, they came to the promised land, and God said, put your foot into the water. And then he rolled the waters back. But they had to step out by faith. God will guard your feet. He will direct your hands. Sometimes we just, you ever felt like you don't know what to do with your hands? That's, when, that's what pockets are made for, right? Don't know what to do with your hands, just take them in your pockets. Well, God wants us to use our hands for his honor and for his glory. And he gives us strength. Do you need strength? Yeah. You know, I'm afraid sometimes we have a tendency to think, well, the only way I'm going to get strength is to do nothing. How's that work out? What happens when people lay in a bed and do nothing? Yeah, what's called atrophy, I believe, right? Your muscles, you know, they atrophy. And you want to keep, you have to use them. In the Christian life, we're, we're, looking at a, we're looking at a marathon and a sprint this next month with Bible time and then Schrock. Well, that's just the way it worked out. So praise God for it. And how are we going to have strength to get through that? Well, I'll just pick the nights I'm going to come because I know I can't be there uh, because I'll get too tired. How would that work when you go to the beach? Well, you know what? Uh, I'm only going to, we're going to the beach next week, so we're going to, uh, yes, and, and, and Luca will be there too. What if I decided, Luca, I, I'm sorry, dude, I'm just not up for you right now. Are grandpas allowed to do that? No. No. No, you just, Lord, give me strength to keep up with this little guy. And praise God, he eventually will drop at about 7 o'clock. I couldn't figure out where our kids, they got this thing. They put their kids to bed at 7 o'clock at night. I said, we never did that. They're pretty smart, though. Then they actually have some alone time. And, uh, but, you know, the answer is not cessation of activity. The answer is, God, give me strength to go on and to keep serving you. And you know what's exciting is when you do it, you get done, you go, that was great. And you realize God's given you strength to go on. But if we focus on us and we don't have faith in God, our way will not be perfect. So you want a perfect way? Trust in God.
Take your hymnals or the words will be on the screen. His way is perfect. Let's stand and we'll sing that together. And don't get excited. This is not the invitation. I've got two more messages. So, his way is perfect. When my way seems dark and drear and the future I don't know, my heart feels so empty as the tears unending flow. When my heart breaks with sorrow and a tempest fills my soul, this one thing I know for sure, my God is in control. His way is perfect. His way is perfect. Though I don't understand His wise and perfect plan, His way is perfect. His way is perfect. Take my life and make a vessel purified. God makes no mistakes. His way is best. When the foils of life are come and my heart is worn with care, I faint neath a burden of the cross I cannot bear. When the joy has departed from my sorrow-stricken soul, this one thing I know for sure, my God is in control. His way is perfect. His way is perfect. Though I don't understand His wise and perfect plan, His way is perfect. His way is perfect. Take my life and make a vessel purified. God makes no mistakes. His way is best. Thank you. Please be seated. So you're saying, okay, Pastor, that's great, but how are we delivered? Take your Bibles and turn back to 2 Chronicles 32. 2 Chronicles 32. We see an account in the life of a great king of Judah. His name was Hezekiah. And so what do we need to do in order to be delivered? Well, Hezekiah did four things here that I think that you will be encouraged by and uh, want you to look here at these and, uh, and, and learn from the life of Hezekiah. Hezekiah, uh, uh, in Second uh, Chronicles 32, in verse 2, says, When Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his priests or princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without the city, and they did help him. So there was gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains and the brooks that ran through the midst of the land, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? The first thing that Hezekiah did was refuse to provide for the enemy. Many times we make decisions that we shouldn't make. It may not even be a bad thing, but it provides the enemy an entrance into our lives. And one thing Brother Redland said is the right thing at the wrong time is what? Wrong. Yeah. And, and for the young people to examine their lives, and we need to examine our lives too. You know, it may not necessarily be sinful, but it may be wrong. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, Lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. But there's some weights that come into our lives sometimes that can beset us. They're not bad things. They're just not the best things. And, and all of us can think about this here, but we, we, we get busy doing good things, and we don't get the best things done. Refused to provide for the enemy. They blocked up the water so the enemy wouldn't have water. 
And, and block, put blocks in your life against those things that will take away from your worshiping and serving the Lord. The second thing he did, we see in verse 5 here, was he built walls of separation. It says, and he strengthened himself and built up all the wall that was broken and raised it up to the towers and another wall without and repaired Milo in the city of David and made darts and shields in abundance. If I say the word standards and everybody gets scared. And we, because we don't understand the reality of what standards, standards don't make you godly. Just because you keep a certain standard doesn't mean you're godly. If you're godly, though, you will have standards because what standards do is they provide an environment for godliness. They provide protection for us. For instance, if I say that I am not going to go within 15 feet of the edge of a cliff, okay, you may say you're going to go within 12 feet. Maybe you're a better driver than I am. And I'm not going to be critical of you for going within 12 feet. And you won't be critical of me for going, you scaredy cat, only going 15 feet. But the standard is there to keep us from driving off the cliff. And I'm afraid sometimes in, in our Christian lives we see these standards. We go, well, bless God, it doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible, so I'm going to do it. We have to have margins in our lives for our protection. And the standards we put up are things that help us, and they will be unique to us. Your standards will not be my standards. My standards will not be your standards. And I'm going to be very careful to preach here. I don't preach standards. I preach commandments, as I did this morning. Okay? I'm not going to preach the suggestions. Now, there may be some things I might say, now here's something to think about. Here's something you might want to, here's a standard that might be good to keep you from falling, to keep you away from that. Because the reality is many times if we don't have a standard in our life, we fall for what? Anything. And standards is part of the protection that God gives us and keeps us from falling from these things. The third thing that Hezekiah did, it was in verse 6. He restructures the people under authority. He says, and he set captains of war over the people and gathered them together to him in the streets of the gates of the city and spake comfortably to them, saying, and he goes on to tell them to be strong and very courageous. And it's important we realize we are all under authority. No matter how old you get, you're still under authority. Okay? Well, when you're growing up, you're under your parents' authority. Then you're under the authority of teachers if you're in school. You're under the authority of law enforcement officials. You're under the, the authority of the person whose store you go into. You have responsibilities. Ultimately, we are under authority to who? To God. You're under authority to the pastor. Why? Because I'm the one is here to protect you to keep you from, many times, doing the things that are going to mess up your lives. I don't mind picking up the pieces. I'm glad to help. But it's so much easier to help you put up a standard, to help you be strong so you don't have to pick up the pieces because picking up pieces hurts. And it doesn't always fit back together the way it should be, does it? But here, that's so, and so, and like I've talked about in our new members class, I said, it's good for you to have, I don't care, and I won't always be the pastor here. Someday, there will be somebody else here, probably a better pastor than I am. And you have the responsibility. You don't owe your allegiance to me, you owe allegiance to the pastor as the shepherd of God's flock. And he is the authority that God has put over you. Now, as a parent, do you tell your children, well, you know what, you can listen to me if you want to? <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, you say, this is what you're going to do. This is what, and, and see, some people say, well, I just wish you were more kind and you let me do what I want to do. Don't stalk me. <laughs> Don't, like, like the little girl when her mommy was spanking her. She says, you know, I'm doing this because I love you. And she goes, well, don't love me so much, mommy. 
But the important thing to understand is that is how we care. And understand, authority is in your life for a reason. God gave you the parents you have, young people, for a reason. God gives you the teachers you have for a reason. He gives you the pastor you have. He gives you the teachers that you have. And it's important if we're going to get the victory, we have to be willing to have authorities. And then the last thing he does here in verses 7 and 8 is that he refocuses his attention on God. Notice what it says. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Hezekiah didn't say, look at me, look at how much I've got going for me. He said, listen, don't look at the enemy, don't look at the problems, look to God. The arm of flesh will fail you. It's the arm of God that will get us through the challenging times. So I want to sing, uh, Be Strong in the Lord, number 670, the words will be on the screen. And so uh, I want to encourage you to be strong in him. Don't let the devil get the victory and, and, you know, I, I see so many times people not being prepared, and when you're not prepared, the devil will get the victory. Let's sing, Be Strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord, and be of good courage. Your mighty defender is always the same. Mount up with wings as the eagles ascending. Victory is sure when you call on his name. Be strong, be strong, be strong in the Lord. And be of good courage for he is your guide. Be strong, be strong, be strong in the Lord. And rejoice, for the victory is yours. So put on the armor the Lord has provided, And place your defense in his unfailing care. Trust him, for he will be with you in battle, Lightening your path to avoid every stair. Be strong, be strong, be strong in the Lord, and be of good courage, for he is your guide. Be strong, be strong, be strong in the Lord, and rejoice, for the victory is yours. Be strong in the Lord, and be of good courage, your mighty commander will vanquish the foe. Fear not the battle, for the victory is always his. He will protect you wherever you go. Be strong, be strong, be strong in the Lord. And be of good courage, for he is your guide. Be strong, be strong, be strong in the Lord. Rejoice, for the victory is yours. Take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41, what to do about fear. Fear has become a very important topic, hasn't it? Uh, well, thank you, Willow for that testimony. And so she says, no, I don't have anything to fear, do you, Willow? But we have fear. It was, it, I, I could not believe how great the fear was during COVID. I just said, there's, there's no reason for us to fear. Our God's in control. Now, did I enjoy having COVID? No. But, hey, you get it bad enough, you're looking forward to going home. <laughs> And I think sometimes God helps us to get ready for home by what we go through later on in our years. And the older we get, the more we say, yeah, Lord, okay, 
I, I think my dad, in fact, I know I showed you that video when he sang that he was, what the glory, the fact of going to be with the Lord. And he's experiencing that joy now. We don't have to be in a hurry, though, but what do we do about fear? Isaiah 41, and uh, the prophet here is giving challenge. First of all, we see it in verse number 10. He says this, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And then verses 13 and 14, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not when thou, when thou worm Jacob and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. John chapter 14 and verse 1, Christ said to him, that uh, when he said here the great passage, when he says, I'm going to leave you, but he gave him a promise, which we oftentimes use, let your heart be, not be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And he goes on to say what? In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. We have no reason to fear. Some people say, well, I can't do anything about my fears. No, but what you can do, you can control what controls you. Don't let that motivate you. Don't let that be. It says, be not dismayed. In fact, it says, fear not. Don't be dismayed. Don't stand dumbfounded. You ever gotten blindsided about something? And you just go, man, I was, well, that's because you were standing there dumbfounded. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. And all of a sudden something hits you. Instead of being ready, you realize you are in a battle. Be strong in the Lord. Understand this. Fear not. And then he went on here in this chapter, and Isaiah gave them uh, the reasons why we don't need to fear. And that's why I want to close with tonight. Number one in verse 10, which I already read there, we don't need to fear because I am with you. God is with us. His presence matters to us. Do we need to pray for God to be with us? No. He already is. And I've made that mistake sometimes. Lord, be with them and say, wait a minute, uh, He's already with them. He's with us. If we have a relationship with him, he is with us. His presence should matter. It makes the difference. We don't need to fear. How can I fear? Jesus is near. near. We trust in him. The second thing, I am thy God. And also in verse 10, person matters. It's not just somebody. And I, like for instance, I can say, Addie, if you need encouragement, I'll hold your hand right here by the microphone. Okay, she's up for it. That's, that's good. Okay, but, but God's holding your hand all the time. Who's better? Well, of course, we had this discussion for a while there. Addie thought I was God, but she's since been taught by her great-grandparents that that's not true. And so, <laughs> but, uh, but God can do a whole lot better job than anybody else can. And that's we have to understand the person who is with us. I am God. And then he says what? Notice back there in verse 10 again. Uh, where we go? Here we go. I will strengthen thee. Provision matters. We can understand that faithful is he who has called you who also will do it. When God calls, God provides. God tells you to do something. He's going to give you the strength to do it. You say, when's he going to send that strength? When's he going to help? He will do it. Trust in him. Rely upon him. His provision in our life matters. And then he goes on in this verse 10. He says there, I will help thee. Possibility matters. You realize God wants to help you with everything that's going on in your life? So what's stopping him? We are. Me do it. That's what our boys used to say when they were young. We want to help me do it. And how many times are we saying that to God? I'll do it. I'll take care of it. And God says, but I could do so much for you. I could help you. I want to help you. And then notice what else. I like this too. He says, I will uphold thee. He'll hold on to you. Jesus made, in fact, his great prayer in the book of John, he said, neither can any man pluck them out of my hand, for my Father which gave them me is greater than all. 
You talk about the good hands people of all state. They're nothing compared to God. We're in his hands. You're in the hands of God. Nothing can get to you that doesn't come through his hands. It's filtered. You say, well, I, I don't think that should have come to me. Well, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But if me do it, <laughs> we're going to have problems. But letting him do it. And the last thing here, and this is something that it's precious. You as a parent know what this is like. I uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. God says, grab a hold. I've got a hold of you. You see, I used to, when we lived in Indiana, we only had one car, and so I would walk the seven blocks to the church many times when I went down there early, and I'd have the boys with me. And, and, and one, Usually I'd take one boy with me, and uh, we would walk, and I would hold his hand as we're walking down the street. Now, whose strength, excuse me one minute. <laughs> Thank you. Whose strength were we depending upon? His holding on to my hand or me holding on to his hand? We don't have to hold on to God's hand. He's going to hold our hand. He's the one that's going to help us through the difficult times. He's the one that's going to sometimes pick us up and carry us when things get difficult. But his hand, the promise matters. In fact, I don't think I said it, I will hold on to you, the power matters. So we see here his presence, his person, his provision, the possibilities, the power, and his promises matter. I will Hold. You know, some people can promise things. Have you ever promised your children something and then you didn't, you weren't able to keep it? Don't look at your parents right now, children. Yes, we all have. You ever promised your mate something you weren't able to keep it? Have you ever promised your pastor something you weren't able to keep it? <laughs> has he ever promised you something and wasn't able to keep it? Yes. But God has never failed a single promise he has given us. Not one. We can trust him. We can hold on to him. So I want to close with <clears throat> a question. What would you do if you were not afraid? We all have some fear in our lives, don't we? Don't let fear keep you from doing what you know God is leading you to do. You know, there's some things in our lives that can be some pretty big mountains to climb. We say, I don't know if I can do that. If God's leading you, God will provide for it. In fact, if you have to, do it while you're afraid. Because you step out. Do you think those, high, those priests of Israel, as they stepped out into the Jordan River, which was at flood stage, were afraid? Okay, all you swimmers go first. They didn't say that, did they? They just stepped out. And sometimes you may be looking at a cavern or a canyon in front of you, and you're saying, there's no way. And God says, I'm able. I'll get you through it. We'll see great things happening. So, but if you're still afraid, which fear is, fear is something that God gives us. You know, it protects us. It keeps us from doing stupid things sometimes. But sometimes it also can keep us from doing the right things because God says, if I've asked you to do something, I'll take care of you. Let's close our service tonight and you can take your hymnal and turn to How Can I Fear? Number 165, let's stand. And if you have a question or a need in your life, we'd encourage you to come or to talk to us afterwards. But let's stand and sing, And How Can I Fear? Jesus is Near. When shadows fall and the night covers all, there are things that my eyes cannot see. I'll never fear, for the Savior is near. My Lord abides with me. How can I fear? Jesus is near. He ever watches over me. Worries all cease. He gives me peace. How can I fear with Jesus? 
When I'm alone and I face the unknown and I fear what the future may be, I can depend on the strength of my friend. He walks along with me. How can I fear? Jesus is near. He ever watches over me. Worries all cease. He gives me peace. How can I fear with Jesus? Jesus is King. He controls everything. He is with me each night and each day. I trust my soul to the Savior's control. He drives all fear away. How can I fear? Jesus is near. He ever watches over me. Worries all cease. He gives me peace. How can I fear with Jesus? Well, I won't ask you which of the three messages you like the best, but I hope they all applied to your life and they were an encouragement. Young people, thank you for sharing with us. AJ is out for the count. I don't know how he made it through a week of camp by staying awake after 6 o'clock, but I guess there was enough, enough activity that he, he was able to. This afternoon, too. He's, he, that little body, those... <laughs> Those little bodies get tired with all that activity, man. I mean to tell you, it was great. And so let's thank the Lord for what he did during our week of camp. Pray for the young people. And then this week, looking forward to what God's going to do. Don't be in a rush. Talk to somebody. Find out. Maybe there's somebody who needs some encouragement tonight. And so don't be in a hurry unless you want to go down to uh, Super Burger and talk with somebody over Burger, whatever you'd like to do. But we'll get there eventually. But uh, be an encouragement. Provoke one another into love and to good works, and be thankful for his goodness and his grace. George, could you close us in prayer, please?